Dave Daly right here on the Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. There's Dave Cackley. It is a Tuesday. Um, uh huh. I spent last night pondering something, and I'm hoping that uh, maybe you can help with um, what's eating away at me. Um, okay. I'll I have spotted a superfluous number of large metal art yard chickens around West Michigan. What do you know about this? Insane? Okay, let me. Okay, okay. You, great use of the word super, superfluous, by the way. I almost yep. couldn't say it. Um, what is the number that makes it superfluous? Is there a, is there a, what's the line of demarcation where, okay, this, this is just too much? Um, two. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and, and the reason I bring this up is, is that the, 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 these are substantial yard chickens. Um, th- these are six footers plus. And what makes me wonder is what are we facing with this new cult of yard chicken people, um, six foot plus? I Are they sending a message? Is there something I'm missing out on? Um, I, I'm a little off put by the whole yard chicken movement and I'd like to know mm-hmm. more. What do you know? Okay, this is, okay, first of all, when it comes to yard chickens, I, and I grew up in the country uh, well, I, I, did I too, didn't see of. a lot of this. I didn't, but I, I this I is new. I really, that's why you yeah, wouldn't have seen a it. new thing. So I, but even now in the country, I still don't, I really don't see that. Um, so I haven't noticed it in my, uh, neck of the woods, so to speak. And, uh, so it's, it's not, I, I don't, I think this is one of those things where you're, you're, I don't understand why you're bothered by it. I, 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 I think it's, it, I get why it's, it's a word. little puzzling. Well, no, a you said word. you were, okay. Um, the, the word I think is um, cautious. I, I'm, I'm a little on guard. Mm-hmm. Um, we've gone through phases, right, with yard art. Yes. Let's look back. Um, for a while, we had the. Um, the gnomes. The gnomes. gnomes those were something. The, that, that's still, um, in fact, that's still, that's still I, a thing. I'm a fan. I like gnomes. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact. I'm even a brand name gnome guy. I'm a Nomeo and Juliet dude. Um, so if we get gnomes, they're going to be Nomeo and Juliet. Uh, inspired, right. Okay. That's eh. just me. Um, of course we had the, um, remember the, the, the fun of the late eighties, early nineties when it was the bent over lady working in the, gar- oh, yeah. in the garden. Yeah. The big fat. I didn't get that. Yeah. Big fat ass bent over. It's like, ha ha ha. There's uh, like, a, yeah. Oh, that's all funny. Okay. That's great. Uh-huh. Then of course there's been the kissing Dutch kids. Um, that's always been a that, favorite. That was always, to me, just a tad creepy. Yeah, I don't like I that one. I didn't, okay, uh, we're, 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 we're getting into an area that uh, there's, uh, there's could a reflecting perhaps ball. be a felony. I don't know. There's a reflecting ball. Those have always been popular. Yeah. Um, there is a windmill. There's a wishing well. Uh, I like windmills. I, I do like, like a windmill. windmills. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, what else has there been in yards? Um, there's always been a nice bird bath. As a, as, a, as a crowd pleaser. Yeah, I like, yeah, those are cool. Um, bird, yeah. Birds will resort to mud puddles. Uh, those are fine, mm-hmm. too. Yes. Um, but this, a bird this, bath kind of, uh, that was, a, that, you were doing well. You Or you would assume the people who lived in that house were doing well if they had a bird bath. That's kind of like. It did that's speak just, you, you get a bird bath, and then you're going to end up, you're going to have a gazebo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, yes. That was 70 chic. Yeah, if you had a bird, one hundred percent. Yeah, that's that's that was the seventies of you made it. Mm-hmm. Um, this this yard chicken thing though, um, I'm I'm sensing a conspiracy. Okay. Um, I I, I think again, I think you may be a, a little a, a little overboard. Here's with this. here's the here's the task though. You you've claimed to be the last journalist. I well um, yeah I, I I'm going to put you well on the be, job is... and it's your job to investigate and find out. Okay why yard chickens are the new thing and i'm gonna need a two-part report by friday to see it first of all look i'm a rip and read sort of fella you know i well, no, i, I no, get no. the stories You're a journalist, i rip them so you off claim. I, I edit i edit it i i edit the stuff down i research the new i say okay well okay what are what are people uh what are the stories that the that people really want to know about? And yeah. then, you know, I, I got to condense it down because I only do three. Okay. You know, it's what I do. You got to, it's the whole less is more philosophy. Do yeah. we really need an index? And, and I'm just going to, 
speaking as a speaking as a, the pseudo journalist that I am. Oh no, it's pseudo journalist. I'm a pseudo. Well, because that's all journalism is now. It's pseudo. It's not real journalism. It's all oh. kind of. It's it's journalism adjacent. Okay. Uh, that's the best you can do. Anyway, uh, I don't think people uh, give a shit about. Uh, Yard chickens. That. I really about yard chickens. No, I I don't think that's a, that's something that's on in the front or even back or even a thought in people's heads. Uh, well, but I, I if, if these continue popping up, I'll tell you what. If these continue popping up, uh, and I start to notice them, okay. Again, and I, again, I live in a in a I don't want to say a rural area. Oh, it's uh, rural, but. Let's not rural because we have we've got a stoplight and multiple bars and well, you have, you have an outhouse. and a Dollar General and a Little Caesars that's uh, hooked up to a gas station, which they all are now because it's gas station pizza. People have figured it out. That's the quality of the Caesars that you get. Anyway, uh, if I start to notice these things, if it catches okay. my eye, then you know what? That report will be made, and I will because that's when I know it's really. Do if, pictures if it hits count? My area. That's where it. That's where it's. Uh, if I really stop and get you some pictures, does that count? Pictures of noticing as like, noticing. If you okay, I, I'm going to need multiple upon multiple. I mean, you can't just oh, here's one. Okay. And don't give me don't give me two from the same yard. I don't want mm. that because that's not that's not accurate. That's just one person who likes yard chickens. Um, I again. I didn't realize this was such an issue with you. Well, I just, I'm getting creeped but, out. I'm getting creeped okay. out. I'm just getting creeped out. I think, I think it's, I think it's a sign. Mm -hmm. I think we may have an emerging cult. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, you know that you're right now. Okay. In fairness to you, this is how cults start. I, uh, it well, starts just with just one or two yard chickens. And then before you know it, you got a whole flock. And then, you know, then they start to organize I know. and develop ideas. And that's what we have way too many. We have way too many ideas now. I know. And I think life was probably better when people were not stuck to uh, the bird bath. Up. Yeah, stick to the bird bath. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Okay. All right. But, well, okay. Thank God. To be to be continued. I'm going to put it down on the list of things to talk about. All right. All right. Okay. Sounds good. I'm going to make a note. All right. Let's get into the the nitty and the gritty. All right, rental costs and evictions are on the rise across the U.S. There's been a 78.1 or 78.6, I can't read my own, a 78.6% increase in eviction notices since just 2021. At the same time, rent prices are up 5% from a year ago and nearly 31% from uh, 2019. So, I mean, you're going to, I don't know that you're going to start to see, seeing, you know, like, actual homeless people who are homeless because they can't afford rent which isn't most i mean most homeless people it's you're ad you're an addict or you're you, you you're insane um you might start to see that like like in those like little tent tent communities you could start to see this more and more from people who just quite honestly can't uh afford housing if the if this continues we got to get a you know we got to get a, a I, I want to explain something to you as your friend, and I'm not mm -hmm. trying to put you on the spot or call you an idiot or anything. Um, we might see this, and your your assumption that everybody that's homeless right now is either mentally ill or... I did Let see me finish. Go ahead. Let me Go finish. Ahead. The fourth world is here and now. Uh, people that are living in tents or in their cars or things like that, you really need... And, and I mean this honestly. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus and I'm not trying to put you in a bad spot or call you out. Poverty is getting to the point where people who honestly work are having to live in their car, mm -hmm. pay for a membership at a gym for a shower and things like that. And literally cannot afford rent anymore. All right? That is different. That is di that, that is one of, that is true. When I'm talking about the people living on the street, I'm not talking about people living in their cars. Okay, you can still there's no difference a car in, a in there looking is at a homelessness. Difference. No, there's not. Okay, listen. There's no difference in looking at homelessness if they're living in a tent on the street or garbage bags on the street covered up or a car or whatever. If they've not got an address, if they've not got a home, that is still considered homelessness. And listen. we are turning into, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what, dude. These these cities that that have mm-hmm. been crapped on and told that, that they've got this emerging problem and and it, and it's these these people have to go and all oh, this other huge. kind of stuff. Dude, it's, it's a huge, huge issue. and it's terrible. It's enormous. And it's not going to go away by eradicating this this problem with bulldozers and throwing them out of their place. It's just no, not going to happen. That's not what I'm talking. When I said this comes from like counselors, this comes from people who are who understand the homelessness situation. I'm not crapping on these people for being addicts or insane. I mean, that could I be any one were. of us. That I'm, could be I'm, any I'm one of us. To but get that you to is look at the bigger picture. That this is that, a lot bigger problem than than. A couple of crazy can people who to, can't live in a house. It, I didn't say a couple. That's the the vast majority of homelessness in this country are people who are addicted or they have mental health issues. Those are the two things. The main those are that's the vast majority of homeless people. It just is. Now there are there some. Yes, there are some who who had a bad run of luck, couldn't make the rent, and are now having to, as you say, live out of their car maybe pay for a gym membership. Maybe they got, they do have a job, but not enough necessarily to afford an apartment. But even those are few and far between. Now with these prices escalating, that could start to become the idea. We're not in a fourth world situation yet. We are in situations in some of these major cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles, especially where people are literally shitting on the street. Now you're not doing that if you're just the guy uh, who, or, or the, in some locations, family, cause I know people who've had to live out of cars before years and years ago, and were able to overcome that, but we're in kind of a different situation now. But when I say that the vast majority of homeless people are either addicts or they have serious mental health issues, that's true. And we got to do something about getting those people off the street and into some facility where they can be treated. Because what we have now, we have a situation where, oh, wait, you, you got to just let them live out there. That's not good for them, and no. it's not good for us. And it does also drag down uh, values of people's property. It hurts people's businesses. So, no, I'm not crapping on, on these people at all. I'm saying something has to be done, and, and that something that has to be done probably is going to have to be some sort of intervention where, okay, we find out, you know, what type of addictions these people have, what time, type of mental issues, and they have to be treated for it. You have to get them off the streets because these people are literally dying on the street. Now, the person who is in their car and living in their car and right now is having a, a rough go of it, they're going to be okay. They're still working and they're able to do that and able to get you know a gym membership, get themselves a shower, get themselves cleaned up. They're, they're, they're going to be okay. These other people, this is the, see, we were talking, we're talking about two completely different situations when you got people with mental health and addiction issues, because again, and that could be any one of us too. If you, if you, you go down the, you go down the wrong path, 100% or you just happen, something in your head just boom goes. So yeah, we've got to do something about that. I'm, I wasn't, uh, be smirching or belittle, belittling those people at all. I, these people need to be helped, and nobody seems to be all that interested in in helping these people out on either side of the aisle. They will pay lip service to it, but not much. Or they'll say things like, "Oh, the real face of homelessness is the person who who you know just can't afford. We, we need more affordable housing." That's not the issue with the people on the street. With the people on the street. That's the mental health and the addicts, and they need help. They need facilities. Now, the other situation, that can be helped out in some ways with some subsidies, maybe getting the getting those people who are working and are of sound mind and able to hold down jobs, uh, getting them some sort of stipend, maybe something in the neighborhood of a universal basic income, uh, which we've touched on before. Again, this is again, and this is this is way too short a podcast to get into all the all the things that need to be done to address those two issues. But those two issues are separate; they're not they're not the same thing. Okay, they're just not. I disagree. But hold on. You, 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 okay, how how can you? Okay, you're you're saying that One a person who's an addict. Other. All right. One begets the. Oh wait, can't 
So it, it, you start the, the off in your there. car is homeless, and you're, okay, I'm going to get out of this. Next thing you know, okay, you move on. Next thing you know, you can't afford the car anymore. Or your car gets stolen. Or your car gets in a car accident. Next thing you know, you're another step down the ladder. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a cycle that, problem that has to be addressed on every level. And I, I firmly believe, and I'm telling you this as a friend, and I'm not trying to get in your face, you need to expand your knowledge on the homeless situation in this country and learn a little bit more. Because, because I, I think, think I, you do. And that's not, I'm not judging you, and I'm not putting you in a corner, and I'm not telling you anything other than the fact that you, you might want to look into it a little deeper because it's a well, lot. And I, I get what do. you're saying. There are people with okay. mental health issues on the street. They're always that's mo- there always will okay, be. Okay, dude, that's most of them. That's my point. My point is we've got to do something to help I think those you're people. wrong in that statement. But that's you look, dude, look into the if you look into the numbers, you, you you look into any surveys that anybody's done who really knows this stuff. I'm not talking about some talking head on anyone on any level who gets, or any politician. That's usually the politician, the, the the new face of homelessness. No, there there is no the, the face of homelessness is the same. But with the way things are going, it could become that too. It could become what you think it is now. It's okay. not there yet. But okay. it could be. I disagree. I think it's there now. Okay. We'll agree to disagree on that. Moving on. Loneliness and social isolation are associated with early death. This is according to the latest study out of Stony Brook University. People experiencing social isolation at a 32% higher risk from dying of any cause. Loneliness increased mortality by 14%. Bottom line, you got to get out and, and occasionally hang out with people. You can't seclude yourself. You can't stay in your, you know, that's how people go nuts. People go nuts when they're isolated. It just, it, it, it happens and they get depressed and they get lonely. And that leads to all, the, all that other stuff too. That leads to the addictions and that leads to the, the drinking and that leads to, you know, violence. It leads to all those things. So yeah, the, it's, it's weird because I understand because I've, I've never been a lonely person. I, I do like being alone. A decent chunk of the time when, when i get a chance to be i i do like that but i can anytime i've ever felt like yeah i sometimes you just you just need to go out and be around people and if you don't do that if you don't make yourself do that uh you are i mean it's one of those things that that you become a slow it's because it's really easy to just sit at home and and not do anything it's written it, it just has gotten easier and easier for a lot of people to do that and before they know it you get you get caught up in your own thoughts and you're just alone with your thoughts. And that's one of the worst places for a lot of people to be is alone with their thoughts. Good yep. Lord. Finally, the price of the pump is down a bit across the state of Michigan. Average prices dropped 7% the past week to three fifty-eight a gallon, according to AAA. That's three cents more than last month, but a dollar sixty less then this time last year when prices hit the, the $5 mark, of course, we're coming up on 4th of July here in a couple of weeks. So you're going to see that. And we'll, we might tick it back up. I, I thought, I think remember Patrick Dahan saying it, it, it could hit 4 bucks a gallon at some point over the summer, but uh, we'll wait and see. All right. Sports, Tigers beat KC 6-4. to four. Cubs win, Cubs win, Cubs win. They blank Pittsburgh 8 to nothing. That's Time for a snack in Jeopardy once again. This one's right up your alley because it's all your favorites. Okay. Uh, snack? Snacks. Okay. We all love snacks. Mm-hmm. All right. Healthy and simple. Broccoli and hummus set you up for this. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to have to reread this question, aren't I? Healthy and simple. Broccoli and hummus set you up with plenty of this complex type of these. This is six carbohydrates. Points. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. You're 100 percent correct. When you said it, what gave it away was the complex. Ah. Is that the complex? Because I'd heard the term complex carbohydrates. Because you don't, when you think of carbs, you usually think of like bread. Yeah. So sometimes, dude. Uh, you know, you, you, Thirty-five thousand eight hundred in the hole. You are on your way to slowly the, working our way look back. At you up. Go. Just, look at you go. Look at you go. Put a star on the fridge up. when you get home. See you tomorrow. See ya.
Hello, Muskegon. Our dry and hot weather will continue for your Tuesday, so let's look at your forecast brought to you by Trendy Health. Your Tuesday weather headlines show we will stay hot to very warm this week, with temperatures really not getting colder than about 83 to 84 for the rest of the week going into the weekend. And with that, we'll see plenty of sunshine into Wednesday with a little bit of haze in the atmosphere, especially for Tuesday. And unfortunately, our rain chances are lowering for both Friday and Saturday. However, we do have a decent chance of rain with the cold front Sunday night going into Monday. But as of now, we're stuck in this Rex block pattern, which means there's a low in the southeast United States and a very strong ridge of high pressure in Michigan and to the north of us, which is keeping us very warm and very dry, unfortunately. We definitely need the rain, and this pattern will not be favorable for that until it starts to break down later this week. And because of this Rex block just continuing today, that means highs will be up near 90 across Muskegon County with places at the beach having temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. So thankfully, at least with this blocking pattern, the beach conditions will be absolutely fabulous. Really, the only concern today is the water temperatures staying in the low to mid 50s. So for your Tuesday, expect plenty of sunshine, lots of blue sky out there. There will be a little bit of haze to the atmosphere due to the wildfire smoke, but really not much is expected. They high of 90 and a low of 66 with clear skies sticking around. With winds generally coming out of the east, it may switch to the west late in the afternoon to a lake breeze though. And we'll stay hot on Wednesday as well with a high of 91 with mostly sunny skies. We'll start to cool down as we approach the weekend, but the humidity will also be on the increase. And like I said, Friday and Saturday, the rain chances have lowered to less than 30% chance, so it's not impossible we could have rain showers, but they will be very isolated, few and far between, until a cold front moves through Sunday night going into Monday, bringing us scattered thunderstorms. And that's your Tuesday forecast brought to you by Trinity Health on the Muskegon Channel, Lime Cold Woods Weather, and enjoy your day today.